I am Anil Kumar and let's together explore how to solve quadratic equations, what precautions should we take and what steps should we avoid to solve quadratic equations. Here we have an example it says x minus 5 whole square equals to x plus 1 whole square. So before telling you what should we do, it's important to also understand what we should not do. Right? So the thing is what should we not do right that is kind of important for us right now what we should not do is do not square root both sides right so this step is do not square root both sides now if you do that then what do you get if if you do that because if you do that, you get x minus 5 equals to x plus 1 and then you say, well, that means minus 5 equals to 1 and that means no solution. Right? So, so that is the problem. So you get this, which is wrong. Now this is absolutely incorrect. Right. So we should not do this part. Well, this is what I want to highlight before we get into the real solution. Okay. Now the thing is, what should we do? Now how to proceed? That is what we are going to see now. So what we are going to do here is, so let's keep it outside. Okay. Now what we should do here is expand, combine like terms and then solve. Correct? So we'll expand this. Many ways to expand it. You could apply the square, perfect square formula, right? Or you can apply FOIL or distributive property. So let's do them one by one. So x minus 5 whole square really means we have x minus 5 times x minus 5 equals to x plus 1 whole square means x plus 1 times x plus 1, right? Now we can multiply with x first both these terms that means this part right so we'll get two terms and then we'll multiply with minus 5 these terms and get two more terms so we get four terms let's do that so x times x is x squared x times minus 5 is minus 5x minus 5 times x is minus 5x minus times minus is plus and 5 times 5 is 25 we get plus 25 equals to the same thing here, right? Now, many of us are using FOIL, right? F-O-I-L. What does that mean? FOIL, the same thing. We multiplied X with X. These are the first terms, and that is F. O is outside terms. These are the outside terms, correct? I is inside terms. That means 5 and X. Last terms, that means this is the last terms, right? So the same steps. So let's go one by one. Foil F. So F is, you do first terms of each, right? So that is, this is first term, right? X times X is X squared. And now we'll do the outside terms. That means this goes with that, right? So that is the outside terms plus X. And now the inside terms these are my inside terms. So inside terms is x plus times 1 is again x. And then the last terms. And last terms here are 1 and 1, right? So that is 1. Well, once you do that, combine the like terms. So we have x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals to x squared plus 2x plus 1. So now we got it, right? Now at this stage, you have two quadratic equations on either side of the equation. Well, we could have come from here, rather from here, straight to this step by using quadratic formula also, which is a plus b whole square equals to a square plus 2ab plus b square. It's kind of important with you to share this because you could save some time. So minus, if this if b is replaced with minus, we get minus b, 
that means minus 2ab here, but minus square is positive, so this sign doesn't change, right? So you could have come straight from here to here, save that time, is critical. At times, especially when you're doing multiple choice questions and when you're running short of time in the test paper, and that's a perfect formula. Doing this avoids some mistakes here also at times. Okay, now let's bring all the terms together and then solve. So x squared, we'll first write x squared minus x squared. We have minus 10x minus 2x. I'm bringing and placing the like terms together. So that will help us save some time. So we have x squared minus x squared is 0, minus 10x and minus 2x gives us minus 12x, right? And 25 minus 1 is indeed 24. So we have plus 24 equals to 0. Now 12 is common here. It's a good idea to take minus 12 itself as common. So we'll just say minus 12 is common. So we have x and when you divide plus with minus 12, minus and 24 divided by 12 is 2. So we get x minus 2 equals to 0. So that gives us one solution and the solution is only this term can be 0. So, so the solution is x is equals to 2, correct? So we do get a solution here. So it is not that we don't have a solution, correct? So, so we saw that the solution exists, right? And what, what is it? So our answer is x is equals to 2, right? Now it exists and it is indeed x equals to 2. Now the question is, why did we get that kind of a thing? Okay, let's place 2 here in the equation and see why. That will show you the answer by itself and an explanation, right? I hope that will make things absolutely clear. So let me place 2 in the, in the equation itself. So what I have is, so what I want to do is, we have this equation as this square equals to this square, and we have minus 5 and plus 1, and instead of x, I'm writing the value 2. Okay, so we have 2 here, 2 minus 5, and x is 2, right? Do you see that? Now if I do 2 minus 5, what do I get? I get minus 3, right? And here, 2 plus 1 is actually 3, right? Now, if you see, minus 3 is not equal to 3, <laughs> right? And that is the reason why you got a mistake there. Minus 3 is not equal to 3, but square of minus 3 is indeed equal to square of 3. Perfect. So that is the insight to our story and why. It answers the question why. Actually, that was more important for me at this stage to explain you this rather than solving. I know you know you are an expert by now how to solve quadratic equation, but that's the reason why you couldn't get the answer. Now the question is, could you have avoided all these steps and got your answer? Well, as you can see, the answer is yes. You could have done, when you do square root, you started with x minus 5 whole square equals to x plus 1 whole square. When you square root it, then it is x minus 5 equals to plus and minus of x plus 1. That's the beauty, right? Now, earlier we saw the plus part solution had no solution. Do you get the point? But if you use the negative part, you do get a solution. And the solution indeed will be same. So let's do it. If I have x minus 5 equals to minus of x plus 1, right? So if we do that part, the minus part one, then what do we get? Bringing, so let me rewrite this. x minus 5 equals to minus x minus 1. Now you can see the solution. Do you see that? So when you bring it here, we have 2x equals to 6. And that gives you the answer, right? And that is indeed x is equal to 6 divided by 2, 3. So, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, I did a mistake here. I'm sorry for that. So when you bring 5 on this side, it is not 6, it is 4, right? And when you divide 4 by 2, you get x equals to 2, right? 
So, so do get a solution and it's exactly the same solution. Do you see that part? Now, so, but I don't recommend that method, but at times you could do it when you have multiple choice questions and there is no harm in doing this method. But remember one thing, when you square root it, you have to take both plus and minus. That's, that's the kind of take from this particular video. So I'll have one more question which is similar to this. I'd like you to pause the video, solve that question uh, and then do it. But I'll again remind you of the mistake so that, you know, we understand that this is a mistake and it should not be repeated. Thank you and all the best.